All right, welcome back to Cricket for Americans. Nick here. Gabe, the, CF, <laughs> the CFA family. Can we say CFA family? Oh, We're still snap. trying to come with a with a cool acronym, you know what I mean? A cool uh, saying for it. You know, I'm I'm working, I'm working. And my, my creativity is just not there. Maybe I need to go on a power walk. What do you think? <laughs> is that going to happen? I don't know. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I like. I want to see like bust those little hip movements too when you're doing the power walking <laughs> with the weights on my arms and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's not going to happen, people. <laughs> the ankle weights. So we are going to be doing a video today that's actually been requested several times on our other channel, Born Reviews. If you're if you're a subscriber to Cricket for Americans, you don't know we have another channel called Born Reviews. It was our first channel. We have a lot of cricket videos on there. Most of the new ones are going to be put on this channel, so you're in the right place. But we've been asked several times to do a making of a cricket ball video. And so I had to go through quite a few of them that I felt the copyright gods would be good with this. We mentioned that a lot on both of our channels because it's a reality of a YouTuber. If you're not sure, um, probably about one out of every four videos gets claimed for the smallest and silliest reasons. And so you want to be smart with what videos you do and who will not be upset with you by reacting to their videos so we are looking at a video today about how to make a cricket ball and it looks like it could be even the kookaburra brand or right. at least maybe not kookaburra but the the red ball type right. of cricket ball no that we... i i always forget which which i think the t20 is right. the one that uses the cricket ball Right. And when we were talking about getting cricket balls and this was all because, you know, summertime, it was getting ready to warm up. So we want to go out and have fun and, you know, get to swing some cricket uh, uh, um, at some cricket balls. I was going to have my son throw a couple. We we're going to throw a couple and make some fun videos. And of course, quarantine happened and, you know, life stopped as we know it for the most part. But we're still planning on doing it. But in any event, everybody told us, hey, get the Kookaburra brand. You know, this is one of the more popular brands. And one of the interesting things we already know is that each cricket ball is handmade. So they even told us, you know, they might look a little different coming out of the box, but that's be and have imperfections, but that's because they're actually handmade, which I'm like, wow, really? You know, think about how many cricket balls must go in a game. You know, not a, as many as baseball, obviously, but that's still a quite a bit so that's an industry in and of itself you must employ a lot of people to make cricket balls because i'm assuming once they go into the stands like in baseball people keep them you know what i mean and if they get beat up too much well no somebody said that they keep using the same ball even if it is beat up and uh in one of our videos let us know in the comments yeah, i'm, I'm right. sure they do you know they they talked about how after you use it for a while the shine goes down and then it's i think it's more uh batsman friendly but I, I can't imagine, and we'll find out in the video, but I can't imagine it's 100% handmade. You know, I mean, so many machines are used in, in factories these days. I was watching this random video about how an ice cream sandwich is made. And they were talking about, I mean, they use these huge like vats, like you would see in Breaking Bad, to stir up the ice cream mixture itself and to put enough chemicals so that it preserves longer. And then so they create the ice cream first, these giant, huge things. And then they have this machine. They just show you a close-up of the, the part right here where it has a million of the flat pieces of the ice cream sandwich and then a little tube in the middle where the ice cream comes down. And it just pushes the tube, like it poops it out, and then it puts the ice cream sandwich pieces together and it pushes it down. And it's actually mesmerizing how it works. There was nothing about ice cream sundaes where they had these little sundaes and there's like eight different toppings. And it just goes here. Psh, psh, psh. I mean, that kind of stuff was just intoxicating to look at. And think like that's, I mean, I guess it makes sense that I was gonna say, you don't that, have one person like this, their tongue sticking out, mm, there we go. And then the next one, I mean, it's just machine, machine, machine. Is it really intoxicating or is this a quarantine talking? Nick, watch your uh, ice cream videos, people. I'm, I'm not even sure how it was suggested on my feed, but I said, yep. <laughs> yep, let me check it out. So I'm, I'm curious to see how much this is handmade. Let's go ahead and jump into it before you do, before we do. Let's make sure that you watching don't forget to do what you do to help us out as a new channel. First of all, please give us a thumbs up on this video. Let us know that we're doing a good job. Don't forget to comment below. But also don't forget to subscribe if you are new to Cricket for Americans. We uh, we really appreciate all the subscriptions out there. We started doing t-shirts on Born Reviews. It'll just be a matter of days before we have some Cricket for American t-shirts in our store there too. So go ahead and take a look at that if you feel so inclined. The first one will definitely probably have a little logo that you see in the top corner here next to Gabe's head. So <laughs> let me know when you're ready with this video game. All right. In three, two, one. Cricket. 
Cricket is a bat and ball game played between ah, two teams right. of 11 players. <laughs> the most basic components of the game of cricket are a bat and a ball. While the bats have undergone a substantial transformation over the years, the balls have more or less remained the same. You must know how these balls and bats are made. So today we will show you how balls and bats are made inside the factory. Welcome to Shad Kahor and if you are new then subscribe our channel and don't forget to click the bell icon so you don't miss out our any videos. Cricket balls is especially used in processed leather which is mainly from Bangladesh. The thickness of this leather is between 6 mm and 4 mm. The ball makers dry and compress the leather down to a thickness of 2 mm to 3.5 mm. To make the ball, an experienced worker cuts the leather for coating on the top of the ball. The leather is then cut with a elliptical dies. A cricket ball consists of a cork core wound with string then a leather cover stitch on and manufacture is regulated by cricket law at first class level. The elliptical leather is shown together by hand. So they're sewn by hand, I see what you're saying. The next That's step crazy. is to attach the pieces of leather with the needle and yarn. Oh, the top layer of the ball is made by placing two pieces of leather into a semi-circular mold and cutting the extra leather with a sharp blade. Cork cords are made on the other side of the factory. Two more elliptical cords are added for cord with pressure and glue, the cord which look a bit like a tennis ball it's like spam with a rolling machine <laughs> twist the yarn on the tennis cord. The cord with a yarn is inserted into the semi-circular leather. The top two layers are then shown with hands and instruments That, that, would hurt, that would hurt your fingers that's like making those little tiny holes right Later, there. an experienced oh, yeah. worker sweat the needle on the ball again so that the ballers could give a good performance in the field. That is definitely where it's the handmade right there, that hand stitching. That that's a hand total hand of six great. stitches were given on both sides. See on either side. I see they got from either side going through. That's cool. Dude, that's a lot of work for one that, ball. It is a lot of work, I agree. No wonder you can cost 20 bucks a ball. You think there would be an easier way to do the stitching, but maybe that's part of the, the stick right there. That's interesting. It's a work of art when it's done. Oh, yeah. The appropriate hand spire ball shape is then placed into a mold of 8.8 .8 to 9 inches in circumference. That's cool. On the cricket ball, the seam is rotated 90 degree to give a cherry red color to the wound. And to make sure there is no uniform shape. So I was probably I probably misunderstood or misspoke. They're hand stitched, not you know handmade. But that's the still logo is placed on the ball. Oh yeah. I should get different brand names on there. See, I'm not sure that when this is done, the balls are sent <laughs> for polishing. <laughs> And the leather of the ball is polished with fire and a synthetic grease. They protect the ball from wet conditions so that it doesn't get too wet. Weight and size are then measured. Now the ball is ready to play. 
cricket bat. Cricket bat willow is a cultivated timber which predominantly grows in a large plantations in wetlands areas throughout England mainly in the southeast. The bat is less than 38 inches in length and less than 44.25 inches wide. It was first used in 1624. The original shape of a cricket bat is cut using a table saw. About halfway up the front of the cricket bat there is a raised peak which looks like a small hinge. The back is left flat. Rub it with a polishing machine to smooth it. The bat will need to be compressed to straighten the willow fiber with a scarf iron machine of the as a bat blade. Around 2000 pounds of a strong pressure is placed around the bat. The handle is then made with a strip of can and rubber. The lower portion of the handle is cut into a wedge shape. The reverse of which is then carved into the blade of the bat using a band saw. The stub made oh, the wow. handle according to the size right. of the bat. The two pieces? Right, that's crazy. Carve the blade using a drop knife so that it is perfect balanced. Glue the handle in place so that the top edge extends a teeny bit above the front face of the blade. Just glue it on there, huh? Jeez. And leave it to dry overnight. The beds are sent one more time to saw to create the perfect structure. Extra part of the bed blade are cut with a CNC machine. You know, they've been doing this for hundreds of years. Obviously, cricket's been around for a long time. I'm just wondering why they would do it out of two separate pieces. Wouldn't one whole piece be a stronger, you know what I mean? Right, and then you just sand it down the middle there, yeah. I mean, I'm getting, that's, a, that's a question I'm going to pose to the That head. is part Maybe of polished so much with a hand cutter and, and polishing piece. machine. I have no idea. I mean, there's got to be a method to the madness. I'm sure they've been making bats for years, so there's a reason they did it to do it this way. But I would just think one solid piece, you know what I mean? Look at how much work goes into just one bat for crying out loud. All that's, the sanding, all the shaping. Wow, that's a lot of work, yes. The worker makes the handle small, small. I wonder how many other things out there we don't realize are glued together into two pieces like that. A rolling machine is used to thread the yarn into the handle. Finally, brush sanders are used to give a beautiful smooth finish. The bat is then ready for labeling, wrapping and knocking in. That's pretty cool. Nice little rubber grip there. Definitely a lot of work. I would not be good at that. I would mess it up, I'd misalign it. Every bed also receives a final check over the ensure that it has been finished to a high standard and that there are no previously unspotted imperfections. The bed is finished that and was ready. A really cool video that was done by um, Sad Cajon. And right. you know, they only have 45,000 subscribers, which is a lot of subscribers, but you would think. A video done that well where you get to go inside the factory and see how a ball and a bat is made. I didn't even realize the bat was part of this. Right. That was super impressive.
No, definitely, definitely. You know, it's funny now that I'm holding this cricket ball in my hand, I'm looking at like what it took to make it. I'm like, oh my gosh, each one of these little stitches, yeah. hand sewn, that's insane. Um, you know, baseballs are made in factories. One of the similarities is that the core is made out of something different. They use a cork, okay, material like we would find on a wine bottle or something like to that effect. And we use like it's a little rubber. I don't know if you've ever actually opened up a baseball, but it's like a little rubber um, ball that goes in the middle. And then they take a whole bunch of string and wrap it around, wrap it around, wrap it around, wrap it around. And after you take the string, wrap it around, then they put the leather on it and the machine does the work. But, um, you know, it's funny because the, the bat's 30, I think he said 38 inches, something to that effect, where a baseball bat is 36 inches on average, sometimes smaller, a little bit, you know, 36, 34, 35, whatever, but um, very similar in size. But again, my question was, wouldn't one whole piece be stronger than two separate pieces, which, I mean, I get, it's held by glue, basically, you know what I mean? A whole bunch of tape and other stuff on there, but there's, I guess there's a method to the madness. They can probably let us know in the comments why they do it that way. Or yeah, I mean, it's just one style. I would think, and as strong as wood glue is, I'm not sure you ever used it before, it's pretty strong stuff if used properly. As strong as it is, you would think that it's two pieces, you know, just enough torque when you're swinging that and hitting the bat, it could just fall apart. But when they're showing all the rounds of sanding it goes through, when you look at that bat after it's been sanded many times, I mean, the only t way you can tell it's two pieces is by the different color of okay. the um, the grains in the wood. But other than that, it becomes one piece, which is pretty cool um, to become one. There's a metaphor there somewhere. I'm not sure where. But <laughs> that was a really cool video. Um, I'm glad that we were we were asked and requested many, many times months ago to react to this because, I mean, you learn a whole lot about any game when you learn about how its individual pieces are made. I'm a huge fan of the office and there's an episode where Dwight is teaching, becomes the manager for a day and he's teaching the crew how to be better salesmen because he's the best salesman in the office. And he goes down to the bare roots of how the tree is made and the best type of soil for that tree to grow <laughs> to turn into paper. I mean, he goes so far back, but sometimes you got to go to the very beginning to better understand a sport to at least better appreciate because these guys and these girls that are playing cricket, I'm not sure if a lot of girls are playing in professional leagues, but these guys that are throwing around these balls and swinging around these bats. I mean, each of those has a story behind it and it's important to know that history, even as silly it is, is how a bat ball is made. No, definitely. Definitely. Um, you know, <laughs> It's like anything else, you know, when, when it comes to a sport, once you dedicate yourself to it, you know, part of that dedication should also be, you know, at least I knew we put balls uh, and we we're talking about baseballs in, in kids' hands, you know, before they can walk. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Put them in their crib, so to speak. You know what I mean? You, you end up sleeping with the thing and walking around with it and it becomes a part of you, an extension of you. And it's the same thing, you know, uh, for those serious, serious, serious athletes that are cricketers, you know, I'm sure they picked up that, that cricket ball at a very young age and they never put it down. I mean, that's how you become great at something. You dedicate yourself fully. And if you're really going to dedicate yourself fully, then, you know, you know everything about it. It takes me back to the MS Dhoni film that we watched. Check uh, our, our review on that. It's on Boring Reviews on channel. But remember when he was in the bedroom and the guys from are in there shaving his bat and he gets the bat. And, you know, swings a couple times. He's like, uh, a couple more inches, a couple more yep. millimeters. He even knows the feeling, what the weight should be. You know what I mean? That's a guy who's dedicated to his craft. He knows what weight he wants it at because, obviously, these are things that are handmade, so not all bats are going to be the same. But it's down to a science. How much weight shaves off? And you saw that's a person who, which we've heard before. He's a perfectionist. That's just who he is. And that's why he became great. But again, you know, um, <laughs> pitchers, a lot of times you see in baseball, any which way, I'm not sure in cricket, you know, they get a ball and they'll grab it. And it's like, you know, this ball doesn't even feel right in my hand. You know what I mean? No, no, no. Give me another one. They'll throw a brand new ball, throw it right back to the umpire. I don't want this. I'm not sure if they can do that in cricket, but you know, you're a professional athlete. Every pitch you make or every bowl you throw, guess what? That's on you. You know what I mean? That's going to cost you money or it's going to make you money. So you want the best equipment in order to perform. So of course you, you should know, you know, within, you know, 
a, a, a second of holding that cricket ball, I guarantee you every single bowler can hold it and say, no, that's off. That's not the right way. You know what I mean? Easily. No questions asked. No, totally. I mean, even you said bowler, it made me think of the sport of bowling, right? I mean, if you go bowling just for fun, you have a certain weight that you like to have the bowling ball as you throw it. And you can start to get in your head and you start to say it's the equipment. You know, it's be like Mike, you know, it's, it's in the shoes. It's all about the shoes. I mean, that's how I was able to score all those points. I had the right shoes on. And so you get in your head, it's the equipment and you know exactly what you like, exactly what you want to use. Even as a teacher for Crown Lot, I can tell you what kind of brand of dry erase markers I prefer better than anything else, because I know other ones are going to stain the board and be hard to clean. They're not going to be as durable. And as something as silly as a dry erase marker, when I'm teaching a lesson, I need a dry erase marker that I can rely on that I know is going to do the job and how much dry I'm going to do. And so it, it, it comes down to that in any kind of field. There's nothing worse than writing on the board and then your your draw, your marker is dry, dried up and you're like, are you serious? You know what I mean? You mm. stop you from your flow of teaching. And I know we got the smart boards where you can write on them, but I don't really like them because they're too sensitive. I'd rather write on a dry erase board as well. But uh, that's funny you mentioned <laughs> that only teachers would be able to appreciate that. Like, yeah, I don't want this uh, off-brand marker that's not going to uh, uh, perform well. <laughs> Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Well, we hope you enjoyed our reaction to how a cricket ball and batters made is made. If you did, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps us out, helps us grow. Let us know what you want us to do next. I'm thinking for Cricket for Americans, it'd be fun to go into different players of different countries, teams, and different countries, highlights, and that or that. So let us know what would be a good video to do in that kind of vein where it's not an official cricket channel because there's no way we're going to react to any videos from an official cricket channel. But let us know if you can find any good ones out there that have been around for about a few years that have your favorite player, your favorite country, even if you're not from that country that play cricket, and from a good YouTube channel that's not going to get us in trouble. Let us know in the comment section. And with all that, be safe, be healthy, be nice. Until next time. That's six runs.